Hello, welcome back. Let's fly Kerbal Space Program. What was the career mode? And now it, we, this is it. The, as promised, we are beginning. This is the space race mode. We'll probably have some flashing letters right around there. Space race, yes! Okay, yeah, what's happening here? Uh, let's get into it. We, we, we started out, we had this mission control mod. Hey, that means we get to follow like a, a custom written campaign, right? Uh, PD, Play Daily TV, and I both had uh, pretty much similar ideas at the same time to use this mod in order to do to, to start over from the beginning and have our Kerbals first starting with, with flying airplanes and eventually work their way up into space. And because we both started at pretty much the same time, uh, we decided, that, hey, why don't we just do a kind of a space race? Is actually PD suggested it. I, I said, okay, sure, that sounds like a good idea. Here, let's select this one. So now we have this space race mission package. Uh, it's something that I personally wrote, and I've been getting the input from PD and also from uh, Ryan, Solar Gamer, who is also being involved in it. Uh, my plan is that I want to go ahead and I want to release this mission pack, and it's not finished, not yet. Anyway, still a work in progress. I'm not certain if all these, these rewards of these need, need adjusted. But anyway, I'm, I want to release this. We're going to have a, a thread. And so we'll have as many people doing, uh, you know, YouTube videos or, or just playing along with their own, per, own particular games. Just the only important part is we're all going to be playing the same missions. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's select this one. Uh, notice, okay, so the, the rules that we, that we decided upon... Uh, we're going to go with medium difficulty, which is what the mission controller starts with. It's default. Uh, we're going our current um, insurance, the, the Kerbal Crew insurance. We're going with 50,000 crones for, for, uh, for each Kerbal. And the budget, the starting budget. You remember that I was seriously in the red? Well, by the government of, of my own nation, they, they, they stepped in. They were severely concerned that competitors up upon the planet Kerbin may be getting, grabbing a strong foothold in outer space and that we would be left behind. So they, they erased our debt and they gave us this starting grant and they gave us this a whole bunch of missions that they want us to do in order to, to maintain our, our primacy. To, to keep us in the, at the forefront, keep us in the running in order to have a, a presence in space. So they're starting out, the budget, 200,000 crones. So, with all that behind. Okay, so what do we want to do? Uh, we've drawn up a bunch of charts and graphs. The science guys claim the atmosphere should thin out to vacuum above 70 kilometers altitude. Build a probe to determine whether they're right and see what the weather's like up there. You need an accelerometer, gravimeter, thermometer, barometer, and one radio antenna to transmit the probe's findings back to Kerbin. And for this mission, this is just, just to make it a little more interesting, liquid-fueled rocket engines have not yet been developed. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll get liquid-fueled rocket engines sometime soon. But it's not quite yet. All right, let's get, I've got an idea how to go about doing this. Instead of starting over from scratch, I want to see if we can repurpose uh, yeah, repurpose existing technology, the Save-01, which, by the way, I've came up, I want to name this thing the Comet. No, I'm sorry, not the Comet, the Meteor. Here we go. There we go. Save that one. There we go, because, yeah, SAV-01 is just not an acceptable name. Okay, now we want this to be an unmanned probe because I'm not willing to risk a Kerbal's life yet. <laughs> not knowing exactly what's going to happen up there. So, let's get rid of that and instead we're going to go with this remote guidance unit. Yeah, this guy here. Good. Alright, stick that thing back in the front. Uh, stick that back on the back. Good. Okay, um, do I want to play around with RCS yet? I'm um, thinking that... Actually, yeah. Yeah, let's do some RCS. Okay, where's that center of mass? Uh, small, yeah, here we go. Maybe this one. Oh, yeah, that'll work as an RCS tank, won't it? It's from the AIES pack. That'll be pretty cool. Let's take a look at center of mass right in the middle of the fuel tank. That's good. Yeah, okay, so... 
uh, we have not yet invented liquid fueled rockets engines. So we have just the good old turbine technology and we have solid rocket boosters. I already know of previous experience that this vehicle, uh, it, 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 when I wasn't really hardly trying, this thing got up to about 35 kilometers, but I'm kind of iffy, kind of hesitant to think that it will actually exceed 70 kilometers just, just in the momentum from getting a good push down it low altitude so I think we're going to attach some solid rocket boosters to it you know let's yeah we can bury those kind of inside like that um okay let's do some more back here about right about there and we'll do yeah one one of these on the top surface of the wing and one of these on the bottom surface of the wing what's this thing costing at this point uh, vehicle costs 16,000 crones Okay, good. Okay, but now let's go and see about embedding solid rocket boosters inside of here. Let's go over to our propulsion tab. We've got these, the Globe 1 SRBs. So we got, let's start off, we'll try, I bet you just two will be enough. Don't want to overbuild just right off the bat, you know. If we can... Uh, except we have this control surface right there. I'll tell you what, let's extend the wings a little bit so we have enough room to fit the solid rocket boosters in between, yeah, between the, the fuselage and the control surface. Okay, let me take these guys, see if we can stick them inside here. These are not going to be detachable, they're going to be integral to the vehicle. I've got just kind of a general plan in mind. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Would you stop flipping around? Flipping around and flipping out. Oh, I got that pretty much just about perfect first try. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's scoot this over just a little bit more. Uh, do this sweep in this because uh, moving those over, changing the wing shape. We have to uh, re redo all our control surfaces. Their rudder is okay. Elevons. There, yeah, let's take, okay, more, and elevators, maximum, okay, yeah, 38, there we go, okay, so, let me see here, I suppose this, uh, this is, we're just going to the, here, we'll call this the USAV, the unmanned supersonic aerial vehicle oh uh oh two here we go even though just just to because we know it's not quite big not quite the same thing as sav one <laughs> i know the naming dif naming conventions get all difficult all right so what kind of price are we looking at now so this thing's going to cost me twenty thousand but i hope to recover the entire vehicle reward of fifty thousand Good, and we're not we're not risking any kerbals. Uh, what's our center of mass like now? Okay, that's kind of dangerously close back there. But I think it's it's enough. We can probably make it work. Okay, guys, this. Uh, oh, oh, wait a second. The instruments. I'm for, almost forgetting an integral part of this thing. Yeah, we need some instrumentation on this thing. Sensors. This, and when I was writing these missions, the first mission, I, 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 would, I took the cue from some of these other missions that I was looking at that other people have written uh, and, and to specify you need exactly this equipment. And But in subsequent missions, I, I decided that that seemed too restrictive, especially for people like me who like a lot of mod parts uh, and would just go in like simple mass requirements. Okay, good. Save that one. I think we're ready to do it. Right, yeah, yeah, let's just go. 70 kilometers. Let's hit it. Click launch. Let's go. Hello? Come on, game. Hello? Are we loading? Are we not loading? Are we loading? Are we not loading? Let's go. There we are. Good. Yes, I'm still... <laughs> still using PD's runway because my runway's no good. It's, I, I figure that my Kerbals, they just run out there really quick and before they uh, they can call the cops on anything, the thing's already 
uh, it's already away, you know? And what are they going to do with, do about it after we've already taken off? Okay, let's set up my airspeed. Airspeed like that. Good. Let's do a control check. There's that pitch. There's that roll. There's uh, rudder pedals. Yeah. There's that yaw. Pull back. Light. Oh no! I, I screwed up on the staging. Oh, this is that's this is Kerbal Kerbal Space Program 101. Check staging before you launch. I screwed it up. Okay. Okay. Being kind of difficult to control. It's okay. This is not a disaster. This is not a disaster. We're just going to recover this vehicle. Oh, oh G-forces. Oh, don't break. Don't break. Let's just smooth out. Smooth out. Okay. Just try to... Oh, don't break. Don't break. Don't break. This is not a disaster. Not yet. <laughs> I mean, it could, it could very well become a disaster fairly easily. But I don't think it's a disaster yet. Let's just be smooth for a bit. Wait for these SRVs to burn out. And then we're going to go back and we're going to land. And we're going to take off again. Oop, oop, oop. Careful, careful. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Whew. Okay. No, careful, 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 careful. Oh, that was scary. Yeah, we didn't want all that thrust low altitude like that. Okay, now we'll go for a nice gentle turnaround. Oh, I totally forgot to retract the gear. That may have helped with some of that wild thrashing around. Yep, well, if they didn't notice that I was using their runway before, they'd probably, you know, probably notice that one. <laughs> Neutralize that trim. Good. Yeah, I guess we probably don't want to land. I'm not really interested in landing right, right back on the Kerbal Space Center grounds. Let's see if we can land uh, off off in the woods a little bit. Since we're being all trying to be all sneaky about this. Yeah, that, oh man, that was a bad mistake. Uh, Kerbal Space Program 101, pure rookie mistake. Check your staging before you launch. I like, wow, how long have I been playing this game? <laughs> how many vehicles have I launched? I still screw that one up. But that's okay. Floating along, lots of float. down there. Okay, there's 68 meters per second. Nice gentle touchdown. Good. Do some brakes. Kind of pump on those brakes some. Brakes, 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 brakes. Good. Nice controllable landing. I like that one. Good. Okay, let's pull this one out. Let's don't all right, all right. Um, it flies. <laughs> Recycle and end flight. So, yeah, we get most of that cash back. Let me see what's there. You know, we, we, we only lost you know, like like 4,500. Okay, cool. Shut that down. Uh, re restart flight. We're going to fix the staging this time. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I imagine. See, now uh, all PDs, the, all the guys are off chasing us over there. All right, let's fix this staging here. Let's go with... Take that one down there. Yeah, I don't want to light those SRBs until we're at high altitude and high speed. All right, yes, yeah, so they all went off that way. We we packed our we packed the the plane up in a truck. All right, let's try it. Oops, hang on. Set the airspeed. Good. Now it's set. All right. Now let's do this more the proper way. Light just the engine. Pull the camera back some. So we're just going to climb nice and gentle. Let's see if we'll first want to get it up above. Yeah, about 70, we pitch back. Nice gentle takeoff. Yeah, you can see it's being kind of unstable in pitch with the center of mass so close to the center of lift. That should improve, though, as 
uh, as we increase in speed, that center lift will move backwards. That's a theory, anyway. Yeah, okay, so we'll just fly nice and gentle ascent, and we'll see, and we'll get, uh, you know, as high and as fast as this, this, this super souped-up engine will take us, and then we'll light the SRB, see if we can get this thing above 70 kilometers, and then go for a landing wherever, wherever we may be able to land it. You can definitely feel the extra weight of those SRBs, and, and uh, I guess the extra weight of that. Whoa, okay. The RCS tank. Oh, we're trying to be unstable here, guys. That's, can we... Yeah, right. Is that, is that going to be too much? That may be too much. I wonder. Let's actually, let's try something. Let's go for a descent. Let's try it. No, 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 no. Startle back, startle back. Don't break anything. Don't break anything. Oh, wow. It's being too unstable. In the transonic range. Okay. Come on. Ooh, scary. This is maybe not a good vehicle. We can make it work, though. Maybe I just need to scoot those solid rocket boosters further back. Oh, let's, let's continue to try it this way. Let's go for maintaining altitude. Or even just a slight climb. I just want to... I just need to punch through Mach 1 and thing, in theory, should... Settle. Okay, no, no, that's not going to work. Ooh, especially if something's breaking. I wonder what that was. Was it important? All right, all right, all right. What was that? Uh, Communitron is my antenna broke off. All right, we no longer have required equipment for this flight. I should have just mounted those solid rocket boosters further back. Or, I'm sorry, further forward. Put our, put our center of mass further forward, because this vehicle's just violently unstable as it approaches Mach 1. I thought, sure, that just, just hanging a couple of, of boosters in this thing, changing around, I thought that it would... See, the, the previous iteration of the vehicle handled so nicely, I thought making just a couple small changes, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Apparently, I was wrong about that. I definitely underestimated the significance of the changes I was making underestimated the, the difficulty involved. Long-time <laughs> viewers of the channel will uh, not be surprised about that at all. I tend to frequently overreach myself. Uh, the projects that I want to take on and the amount of complexity and difficulty involved in them. Okay, a little bit of a hop. And just set her, just set her down. Come on, you can do it. And some brakes. Good. Well, the vehicle's certainly demonstrated it's capable of landing fairly nicely without everything breaking off. Okay, here we go. Let's recycle it again. So now what's my budget? Down to 192000 Nothing to show for it. Okay, let's get back into the space plane hangar. And think about this. Um, okay, let's take a look. Center mass, center of lift. This is bad. We need our center of mass further forward. Um, you know what? Look, I think I think a cup. I can think of a couple of solutions to this. One thing I see that I forgot is this thing needs more batteries because it's a probe, and it's going to be existing up up in the outer space. You know, let's like, let's, let's toss two batteries on there. Charged to last a long time. Okay, this is USAV 02B. This is this is where these ridiculous names and, and identifying numbers for vehicles come from. Is exactly a process like this. All right, save that one. Now we have our mass is further forward. Our lift is further back. Uh, oh hell! Look at this. Look, I forgot to mirror. Okay, it did the flight. Okay, the flight controls are mirrored, just the SRB isn't. Uh, turn that off, turn that I said turn that off. That's uh, still disturbingly... Disturb the center mass disturbingly far back. The center of lip disturbingly far forward. Okay. 
Could put a longer nose on this thing, maybe. Okay, well, that's a, it's uglier, but I think it may work better. Okay, save it again. Okay, guys, you want to... <laughs> Our price on this thing's gone up now. It costs twenty-one thousand. Yep. <laughs> Burning through that budget. Nothing to show for it yet. But come on, it's going to be glorious. It's going to be just fantastic. This thing's going to get up out of the atmosphere. It's going to come back. It'll be a good time. You know. I figure that by this point, we've probably got a good working relationship where we're bribing some of some of PD's uh, staff to just look the other way whenever we use this runway. Give them extra sandwiches and Mountain Dew or something. Okay, let me see. We got the airspeed set up. Good. Uh, okay, got the miss mission selected. Good. There we go. Burning that budget some more. Throttle up engine power. Let's try it out. This engine takes a while to accelerate. Okay, this airplane slightly, yeah, it wants, it wants to, it waited till a faster airspeed to take off. So it'll probably want to land at a faster airspeed too. Please be more stable as we, as we approach some of these Mach numbers. Pull the camera back some. Okay, approaching point 0.8 Mach, where we started having really bad problems before. Fairly smooth. So, okay, okay, here we're starting to get unstable again. Pilot-induced oscillation. Let's just calm that down. Calm that down. Good. There's supersonic. I bet you it all smooths out as we... Get past like Mach 1, past Mach 1, right? Appears to be. Good. Okay. Okay. Don't anybody do anything stupid. You can keep on climbing, keep on accelerating. I think we're past the danger zone. Mach 1.3 and climbing. Yeah, so this this vehicle is sig it's significantly heavier than the previous manned version. We added all this extra equipment, those SRBs, RCS. We lengthened the nose, so it's probably not going to get uh, you know the similar just outrageous performance that the uh, that the first one was getting. It still should be pretty good though. And okay, now look at that Mach number taking off. We passed through 14. That's about the maximum efficiency. Let's start pitching back more. Go for a more aggressive climb at this point. And if I can, real wobbly and roll. Because we're about to run out of air. We're going to be lighting those solids off. Mach 2.1 and increasing. It's going to flame out any second. Twenty kilometers altitude. Okay, it flames out. Throttle back. Light the SRBs. <laughs> Actually, I should keep the throttle up just in case it gets a little bit of thrust. As this thing gets up through Mach 3, ah, it flamed out again. <laughs> yeah, can we pitch back more? Pitch back more. Let's turn that RCS on. Pitch back more. Get more vertical. Ooh, stars, even though we launched in daylight. Ooh, okay, careful, careful, careful. 
Let's keep this thing under control. Let's turn SAS on at this point. Good. Uh, kill the trim because that was causing us some problems. Whee! All right. Turn that RCS back off. Let's not be wasting all that. Okay. I believe this looks like we should have we should have done it. You know. 50, 54 kilometers altitude and still just screaming along. Whoops, whoops. There's 60 kilometers. Okay, wow, that's a lot more sensitive in all the controls than I had anticipated. Can we just calm down, calm down, calm down? Put it right about there. Good. Turn our CS off. Good. Okay, 68 kilometers, still screaming. Yeah, we're definitely going to hit 70. This is predicting apoapsis of like 92 kilometers. Good, okay, we have accomplished this part. Hide, finished, goal. All goals finished, accomplished. I can finish the mission now. How about that? So, yeah, that, that'll nicely get us, you know, return our, our investment in this vehicle. Finish the mission. Now, something we can actually do, select mission... No, wait a second. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, open browser window. Race 1.2, first landing. Let's select this one. Apparently, things get hot at high speed in atmosphere. Who knew, right? The goal now is to figure out how to bring the probe safely back to Kerbin from outside of the atmosphere. We're still very early tech, no liquid-fueled engines. I should change that, say, to read no liquid-fueled rocket engines. You know, jet engines are certainly acceptable. Okay, so... Yeah, let's select that one. We can hide this finished goal. So now we can accomplish two missions with one vehicle. As this thing approaches the top of its arc and it starts to go down, if I can land this thing, you know? And already we got a profit. Running here, 221,000. Okay, now as we came, come over the top, we're starting our way back downhill again. Uh, getting lots of useful data. You know what I should do while I'm up here? because this is the whole point, is the mission was for some of the science. Well, we're broadcasting. It's going beep, beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, sending information back to the science guys, the eggheads, uh, letting them know exactly what kind of, what kind of the, the vacuum and the, the temperatures and just all kinds of conditions. So they'll be able to figure out what, how this whole outer space business works. Gotta like the science guys. And, it's the interesting thing about doing this, this whole figuring stuff out while recording. Yeah, I'm recording, but it's, it's, it's like doing it live in that I frankly don't know if this design is going to survive re-entry. I mean, I saw how a very similar design performed at, at high speeds in the atmosphere. I think it probably will do okay with a re-entry from, from sub uh, suborbital hop like this, but I don't actually know that for a fact yet. So... Yeah, everybody who's watching you will get to find out at the same time I do <laughs> whether it'll work or not. Oh, come on. Wow, I turned that. Yeah, with no RCS on, this thing has like almost no control. But with RCS on, it's way too much control. Got some cheerful orbiting music. Kind of late. We, come on, man. We've been out of the atmosphere for a while. And we just went back in. We just heard the first few measures of <laughs> song. And now we get to go back in. Okay. So, let's try and get this thing angled to, like, kind of a nose-up attitude. Call it, like, 20 degrees nose-up. There's about... Just kind of a guess. And that should help break the... Break our 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 re-entry. Do some arrow breaking. Read temperatures. What we got? This guy is at negative fifty and warming up pretty fast. No, do not be dropping that nose like that. Okay, let's try it with the RCS. No, stop that. It's not so violent, guys. Come on. Mach four. Um, hang on. Let's change this. To EAS, we're almost out of RCS juice. Coming down there towards our towards 30 kilometers, we're 
traditionally, I know things get pretty hot below there. I mean, I know it. I suppose my, my Kerbals, if we're just in role-playing in the, in the course of this series, my Kerbals don't really know that yet, but they, they suspect. Woo, there we go. There's some hot. Yep. But it's just Mach 4, and this thing's did Mach 4 safely. Ooh, before, except we're being kind of hard to control. G-forces, no, 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 oof. Woo, okay, um, maybe that part needs some work. <laughs> yep. Okay, we're not going to get that one. But we got the first mission completed. So now we just have to uh, work, work on this one. Uh, I think the heat wasn't exactly a, an issue. I think the, the G-forces were the issue. Yeah, look at this. Everything exceeded G-force tolerance. 9.2 Gs. Yeah, that'd do it. Oops. Okay, well, hey, anyway, that's the first episode or, or whatever of... Yeah, the, the Let's Fly Curl Space Program, the Space Race Mode. Uh, yeah, we'll do some more thinking on this, and we'll come back later. Bye.